Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today is the big day. I'm going to be announcing the winner of the OLED Steam Deck. Still packaged, ready to go. I'll be announcing the winner at the end of this video. And I'd like to thank the developers of iTech Guy for giving me the OLED Steam Deck to give away on my channel. And I highly recommend checking this app out. You can download it on the Apple App Store. It's basically your AI tech assistant specialized in hardcore knowledge on iDevices powered by RAG Driven Chat GPT. You get 30 free questions when you first download the app and you can ask it anything you want. Like, what's the best GPU to use in my Mac Pro 5, 1 if I'm using OpenCore Legacy Patcher and Sequoia? So check it out and make sure to make it to the end of the video to find out who won the OLED Steam Deck. And this video is about this bad boy, the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. This thing has more ports. It's really cool. I have an M2 MacBook Air, which is really limited on ports. It only has two Thunderbolt ports. So I can hook this thing up and I get a huge amount of ports. Now this thing's not light. You're not gonna be taking this in your suitcase unless you're really doing some serious work, then you might take it with you. It's really built for your desktop. It does come with a very hefty power brick but it's got plenty of cable on either side of it so it can just sit on the floor and you'll easily be able to put the dock on your desk without having to have the power brick up there with it. And right now you can save 10% using the discount code MAXSOUND. The link is in the video description if you purchase it directly from Ivanki. When you come home with your MacBook Air, you're going to plug it in. It's going to give you an external monitor and it's going to give you all these extra ports that your MacBook Air does not have. And if you have a MacBook Pro, it will give you even more monitor outputs depending on which chip you have. You either get two or up to four external monitors. So let's take a look at the front and the back of the unit. On the front of the unit, we get two downstream USB-C ports, 40 gigabits, 15 watt. Those are Thunderbolt ports. And and display ports so you can either connect hard drives, Thunderbolt drives, USB-C drives, and or monitors to these two ports in the front. And they support up to 6K at 60 Hertz and higher refresh rates at lower resolutions like 4K 120. Basically, these are Thunderbolt ports. They work exactly as the ports do on your MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. Then we have two USB-A ports at 10 gigabits for your typical USB drives. And we also have a USB-C 10 gigabit port with 30 watt power delivery. So that is great for charging your iPhone, your iPad. I would not recommend connecting a portable SSD as it does not seem to stay mounted because it's actually delivering more power than it needs. So don't connect your hard drives to that port, but your your phone and your tablets are the way to go because it will high speed charge them. Then we have another USB-C 10 gigabit port. This is the one to use for your portable USB-C drives. And we have an SD card reader and a micro SD card reader and a 3.5 millimeter mic and headset jack. I did check out the sound coming through the headphone jack with my AKG headphones and it sounded good, had plenty of gain and was nice and clean. And lastly on the front it does have a little power light that's not bright at all. It doesn't blind you, but it'll let you know that the unit is powered up. And unfortunately, there is no power switch on the unit. It's just plug it in and you're powered up. So I have mine plugged into a power strip with a switch. Therefore, I can just turn it on and off when needed. And now on the back, we have a three millimeter line out port. We have an optical Toslink audio port, which is very interesting that it has that. If you wanted to connect your home stereo or some other audio gear, we have three more USB-A 10 gigabit ports. And we have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Um, sadly, that's not 10 gigabit. I wish it was, but we'll take the 2.5 over the typical 10 base T. Then we have two HDMI 2.0 ports that support 4K at 60 Hertz. And there's two more Thunderbolt ports, just like on the front, which supports USB 4.0 and Thunderbolt 4. So the dock does not give you any more displays than what your computer supports. So my MacBook Air only supports one external display. But if you have a MacBook Pro Max, 
you can get up to four additional displays and you have all these extra ports to play with. And lastly, we have the two upstream USB-C ports. This is where you connect your MacBook to the dock in the back via these two 40 gigabit Thunderbolt ports. So here's my M2 MacBook Air with the dock connected via that dual Thunderbolt 4 connector, which connects to two ports on the MacBook Air and to the back of the dock. And then I connected as many hard drives as I had lying around, which used up almost all the ports, but not all of them. This thing has a lot of ports. And as you can see, I've got a plethora of different types of drives. I have spinning drives, I've got SSDs, I've got an OWC Thunderbolt drive, and they all mounted without issue. So here's my MacBook Air's desktop. You can see I've got eight different hard drives connected via the dock and I've got an SDXC card from my Nikon connected and I also have one of the USB-C monitor connections going to my Aorus FO48U OLED display which is getting 120 hertz refresh rate just as if it was plugged into my MacBook Air directly. I ran Blackmagic speed tests on all the drives and they all worked just as well as if they were plugged in directly to the MacBook Air. So here's the OWC Thunderbolt Envoy Express which has an NVMe in it connected and it is supposedly limited to 1500 megabytes per second. And it's actually getting a little faster than that on the right speeds. And here are the speeds with the OWC drive connected directly to the MacBook Air. And it's pretty much the same exact speeds. I have had some issues with the Samsung T7. It mounts fine when I'm using the Fusion Dock Max 1. But when I try and mount it directly with my MacBook Air, it doesn't mount sometimes. So just for the heck of it, I attached the T7 to my Mac Pro and the speeds are quite different. The write speeds are a lot slower and the read speeds are a little bit faster. So to sum it up, I'm really happy with the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. It's been uh, pretty rock solid and it is built like a beast. It's a tank, it does get a little warm, it doesn't have a power switch and it doesn't have 10 gigabit. So those are my only negatives, but for me, it's a great pairing with my MacBook Air gives me all those ports I don't have without having to hang a bunch of dongles off it and it charges my MacBook Air while I'm using it. I don't have to use my power adapter. So I just can come home with my MacBook Air, plug in the dock and I'm off to the races. So thanks to Ivanki for giving me this dock and also I have a video on their DisplayPort cables which basically saved my computer. I had a bad DisplayPort cable that was literally sending power back into my computer from my monitor over a faulty DisplayPort cable. So I bought an Ivanki DisplayPort cable, which is VESA certified, and the issue was gone. So click the link in the upper right hand corner if you want to watch that video. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winner of the OLED Steam Deck, which was given to me by iTechGuy. So check that app out on the App Store and give it the thumbs up and give them a positive review. They might give me another one to give away. So let's keep the good vibes going. And the winner of the Steam Deck is... Dun -dun -dun -dun, Eric Sabula. Congratulations. Send me an email at maxsoundsolutions at gmail.com with your mailing address and I will ship off the Steam Deck OLED ASAP. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up. It means a lot. And we'll see you in the next Max Sound Solutions video.